Hi everyone, I thought for a moment I might uh, do it this way, but I realized that uh, that's backwards. Hang on a sec. Hello, it's good to see all of you. I, uh, I'm i still working on the technology. I think I'd figured it out by now, but uh, uh, well, I'll keep trying. Uh, it's good to be out here with you today. Uh, another beautiful day here in Gary. Uh, I thought I'd take advantage of the sunshine and uh, come on out and spend a few minutes with you. Uh, this week I've been uh, uh, telling you about some of my uh, interesting articles that I've collected along the way over the last little while. And uh, one that, uh, that stood out to me back just about two years ago was one written by uh, James Beverly. Uh, he uh, has been a consistently great gift to uh, the uh, believers in Jesus Christ here in Canada. And uh, his work has not only been uh, admired and used here in Canada, but around the world. Uh, he's a, a great man with a great mind, and he has been willing to uh, share that with, uh, with us. And uh, one of the articles that he wrote not too long ago was uh, concerning Christians and conspiracy theories. I'm going to put it uh, in a post, uh, I'm going to post it along with this today. Uh, I think you might find it to be very helpful reading. And uh, within it, he uh, talks about some of the things that have uh, come to uh, come to fruition over the last little while. And uh, but also he makes reference to the fact that we as people, uh, we as a, a race, have uh, often uh, been involved in the whole matter of conspiracy theories. And so it's not something that's new uh, to the 21st century, but there are uh, various examples throughout history. Uh, and within that uh, article, he makes a point that uh, I think is uh, valuable for us. That we as uh, followers of Jesus Christ have been uh, told in the scriptures that we should test the spirits. We read that in uh, 1 John chapter 4. That, that command to us that we should uh, check things out. That, uh, and that uh, we are uh, well equipped for that because we have the Holy Spirit dwelling in us. And that we can test the spirits because of the power and the work of the Holy Spirit in us as followers of Jesus Christ. As well, he makes mention of an example that's uh, uh, there in uh, the book of Acts. As uh, Paul is teaching in a place called Berea, uh, the, uh, the believers there, uh, the ones receiving the teaching, are uh, described as ones who went home and did their homework. In fact, they heard what uh, Paul was saying and then uh, they went home and they dug into their Bible in order to check and to see uh, about what Paul was teaching. Uh, so we admire uh, the Bereans and uh, we should be, uh, have that sort of spirit about us and that uh, we would go home and check things out. One other thing that uh, Dr. Beverly doesn't mention in his, uh, in his article, but uh, really comes to mind for me uh, when I think of uh, this whole matter of, of conspiracies and uh, how we should uh, try to avoid getting sucked into them. Uh, it's something that Paul said in the, the book of Joy. I call it the book of Joy because often in Philippians, uh, Paul talks about his joy and about his rejoicing. And uh, in it, uh, even at the end, he uh, tells us that we should rejoice in the Lord always. Uh, Paul, who was uh, imprisoned uh, while he was writing the letter, who was uh, there really on uh, weak charges, trumped up charges. Uh, Paul, who was uh, uh, utilizing the opportunity that even his imprisonment meant, uh, was ready to say in, uh, in chapter 1, early on in his letter, uh, he said, some are preaching the gospel out of goodwill. Some are preaching the gospel out of evil intent. And he says, some are trying to speak against me because they're trying to get me in trouble. Some are speaking with me uh, because they are people that are sympathetic to me. And then he describes it with kind of a, an interesting point of view. He says, in a sense, it doesn't matter because of this. So long as the gospel of Christ is being preached, and in that I see the, uh, the example of Paul and the reminder to us that we can get, uh, we can get all uh, blown here, there, and everywhere by things that are going around on around us 
and we can forget what our mission is. We are to preach Jesus Christ. And I think it's uh, helpful for me as a, as a pastor to uh, remind myself again of uh, what uh, my role is. I am to preach Jesus Christ, the one who was crucified and buried and rose again the third day to save us from our sin. And that uh, it could be so easy to get swept up by all of these things, all of these winds, all of these spirits of the age, and forget the purpose. We preach Christ and Him crucified. And so that uh, is uh, the greatest uh, boundary and guideline to help all of us as we uh, face uh, interesting things that come our way, and conspiracies and theories and all those sorts of things. Uh, let us keep in mind this truth. We never go wrong with teaching and preaching and holding on to the gospel of Jesus Christ. So let's be people who preach Christ and Him crucified. I hope you're having a great day wherever you are. God bless you.